Bet on Bears fans, the Friday edition of the Chicago Bears podcast is here. Jason McKee is back. A little, little more tan, a little more tan than when you left, dog. You know I mean? Yeah, you see, man, I'm melted, man. I, I, I can't even lift my shoulders up, my, my arms up, man, because my shoulders hurt so much, man. But I came back just in time, right, Pat, because we had a highly anticipated pro day uh, yesterday by one Caleb Williams, who is right now slated to be the number one pick to our Chicago Bears in the draft. And uh, we got a very special guest today, um, a coach who took some time out to join our show, a coach who's coached football for a long time since back in 2002. And uh, currently, he is the offensive coordinator at Libertyville High School. And back in from 2014 to 2022, he had the opportunity to coach the number one player in the class of 2021. And that player was Caleb Williams, who took part in the pro day yesterday. So without further ado, we bring in our special guest, Coach Danny Schechter. Coach, how you doing today, man? Doing great. Appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, excited to talk about my guy, uh, my guy, Caleb. What is it? What is the feeling when you a guy that you've coached, a guy that you I'm assuming you were working very, very closely with at the high school level? actually gets the opportunity to achieve the highest heights, not just being drafted to the NFL, but literally being touted as one of the best players we've seen in the, we've seen that can come into the NFL in the last 10 years. I mean, the two words, happiness, I'm just really happy for, for him. Uh, he, he works really, really hard to be as good as he is. He was blessed with a lot of natural gifts, but y'all have seen tons of guys who've been blessed with a lot of talent, but the hard work, determination, competitor, competitive nature within him. I'm just really happy for him. And then I'm really proud of him uh, because what he's going through isn't necessarily the easiest thing, you know, going from a high school player, college player, blowing up, uh, being very, very big, popular, well-known, uh, but being able to keep a level head and being a good person, uh, being able to maintain being a really good person and being true to himself. Uh, so I'm really happy for him and I'm, I'm really proud of him. Yeah, Coach Sheck, I want to take it back. So back to, you know, Gonzaga College High School. Uh, you know, when Caleb first set foot on campus, uh, what were some special traits that you guys noticed as a coaching staff that made you say, hey, you know what, this kid's going to be special? Well, I've never seen anybody throw a football like that as an in, as an eighth grader freshman. You know, he, he threw it better and harder than anybody I'd ever really seen in coach, and that was him going from eighth grade uh, to being a freshman. Um, and then just – his athleticism and you could have put him at any position outside of O-line and D-line and he would have been the best one there and he probably would have been one of the best offensive and defensive linemen too so you had a guy who was naturally gifted and talented in a, in a lot of ways uh, but he was humble quiet and hungry to get great it's it's funny right because you see him at the end of the uh, uh pro day yesterday do a punt and i think the punt ended up going like 50 yards i'm like let's first off we've seen enough punting but the fact man, that this man. mug actually executed a, a really good punt like yeah. just in case we need it like keep that in the back pocket <laughs> yeah let me ask you this the the biggest question that caleb has had has been personality wise the have you seen kind of through his through his process how he is as a teammate how did he interact with with the people who he had to be closest with because he had to have that relationship with them on the field everybody who knows caleb and has dealt with him loves him he, he is a good, really good-hearted person uh I'll, I'll never forget it was uh after his freshman year going into sophomore year uh we were having this big family barbecue and you know all these people are inside have yucking it up and having a great time and you know, I was, I was looking, I was like, where's, where's Caleb at right now? He was out in the front yard, you know, just throwing the ball with, uh, with, with one of the little brothers of one of his teammates. Um, and he wasn't doing it because cameras were on him. That's just who he is. Yeah. Um, he, he cares about other people. He's, he's a man for others. Um, and all of his teammates have, have always loved him. Is he, is he perfect? No. Uh, but uh, he was a lot of fun to coach. Um, you know, you didn't really have to worry too much about anything off the field with him. Um, he's a good young man who cares about other. That's why he has the Caleb Cares Foundation. Um, and he does a lot of great things in the community uh, that maybe don't get as much of a light shine. Uh, but, you know, it's easy to have an opinion when you don't know what you're talking about. So a lot of people who are speaking negatively upon him, they just don't know him in any way, shape or form. And they just see what is being said about him on TV or some of those negative clips that people like to show. 
I think what you really see is a young man who really cares about his teammates and is going to lay it all out on the field. Um, and you got to give mad love and respect for that. Yeah, Coach, I want to dive into the X's and O's of the game and, you know, playing quarterback on the NFL level. Uh, it's all it's mentally you got to have a high mental aptitude of the game. You got to be able to retain a lot of information and process quickly uh, during your time. You know, at Gonzaga, did you ever have to scale back the playbook for Caleb or did he really retain information uh, at an elite level? Uh, we did not scale the playbook back for Caleb at all, actually. Uh, so he he you started to find playing. stuff to add. Yeah, we we're it was like, well, he, you know, the reason he chose Gonzaga was because it was going to challenge and push him academically um, and that he yeah. felt like when it came to playing football, that he was going to be pushed to learn a higher level of football than maybe some of the other schools that he was interested in at the time. So uh, do we give, say, hey, here's a whole entire playbook, you know, learn it and see in a month and you better know it. No, like we were putting in a lot of time and effort, um, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, you know, we were winning when it was dark uh, by by meeting hour, two hours, multiple times a week. Um, and we, we started from ground zero and just built up that knowledge base. Um, and, you know, by the time he was starting, he earned his starting job as a freshman. He beat out two juniors who knew the playbook very, very well. They were very committed, great young men as well. Uh, but Caleb left no doubt because not only was he shining with his arm talent and everything else, but he was showing that he knew his job and could execute it on the field. Um, and so, no, we didn't, we didn't scale back. And then just over the course of time, it was like, all right, how much can we push him? How much can we grow? How much can he learn? Um, because that was really my job. Uh, don't screw him up physically. Uh, he, he had all the makings to be great there. And then my, you know, I just was like, what can I do to make sure that when he goes to college, that he is more prepared for that level than any other quarterback in high school. And that was really my number one job. And it was a great driver to be my best. So that way he could be his best uh, during his time at Gonzaga, as well as after. So I hope I did a good job and I hope he thinks that I did as well. Cause um, well, it, listen, it cool. seems like it. He, he's getting ready to go into the NFL draft. Well, it seems like something. He, worked. Gave, he gave coach a shout out. Then it was pro yeah. day. So I'm watching the pro day and he, and he mentioned, you know, all the people that helped him along the way, which I thought was that just another Testament you know, to his character. Don't forget where you came from. And he mentioned, you know, he said, I got to get back to Coach Sheck. And I was like, hey, man, I got to, you know, get in touch with Coach. You know, he's right down the street. But, uh, yeah, Coach, I also want to talk about, so, you know, we've talked a lot about his personality. Now we're getting to the playbook. Uh, what traits do you do you see Caleb having that will make him successful in the NFL? Well, going back real quick to the shout out. I know I appreciate it. Appreciate it. My family loves that kind of stuff. Obviously my little guy, Zade, uh, he's Caleb's number one fan. Uh, the first ball that Zade caught was this little tennis ball when he was like two years old, Caleb threw it to him. Uh, and, and, and Zade caught, I was like, look at this guy, he can make every throw. And that's probably, you know, his, his best trait is he can literally make every single throw, uh, going to the right, going to the left, forward, backward, diagonally, right? Sidearm, all the way, whatever throw you need to, uh, made, this guy, Caleb Williams, can 100% make that throw. And and a lot of guys have powerful arms, right? You can see guys throw it 80, 90 yards, right? Throw 80 uh, mile per hour fastballs with a football. Uh, but can you do that accurately, right? Can you throw a missile, but it be hit the receiver's hands and be a soft biscuit? And I think that's one thing his receivers are really going to appreciate the fact that the ball is going to be where it needs to be when it's supposed to be there. And it's going to hit, hit their hands and it's going to be like, boom, right there, catching a nice soft biscuit. Um, he, he can give you the velocity. Uh, he can give you the accuracy and he can do it all in between from every angle. Um, and I've, I've never seen really anything like it. And obviously there are comparisons being made to other top tier quarterbacks. Um, and, uh, you know, Caleb is one of one, just like some of those other guys are one of ones as well. Um, but he could, he could do it all when it comes to the arm talent. And then you add his feet on top of it. Um, he doesn't love to run. Um, you know, he, he would much rather divvy out the rock to his teammates. Uh, but when he's got to tote it, he, he'll, he'll pull it down and do something special for sure. Yeah, and I, I think he made it that point. You know, Colin Cowherd tried to trap him a little bit the other day, and he's like, well, were you running because your offensive line was terrible? Or were you like, all right, dog, he ain't even in the league yet, and we're trying to hit him with these questions? Like, come on, dog. But <laughs> let me ask you this, because it's funny when you think about 
you know, high school to college, you sit there and go, it wasn't that long ago, right? Like it, it was a few years ago that Caleb Williams is sitting in the room with you learning from you. What is the biggest thing development wise that you see now as him finishing out his college career and go, wow, he vastly improved at that, that you think will still be able to get better at the NFL level? I think it's always a mental game, right? The physical side, it's always going to take care of itself, especially when you're a guy like Caleb. Um, I think the physical work is always a lot easier, but you know, there's a huge jump mentally from high school to college, even though I felt like our system in high school was a pretty high level system. I mean, being able to ID linebackers for pass protection and making those kinds of adjustments, that takes that takes a lot of work. I um, mean a lot, a lot of a lot of knowledge. And I think, you know, Lincoln and 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 what he's been able to do with Caleb and just elevate that mental game. Um, and I think that's the kind of stuff that Caleb was looking for in the first place. And that's the kind of stuff that when he goes to the NFL, it's going to transition really, really well. Yeah, coach, I want to talk about, you know, something off the field. Um, a lot of people, a lot of so-called experts have said that, you know. His father obviously has been an integral part in his entire career. He's always been around at practice on the field. In every endeavor that Caleb's involved in, uh, there's kind of been – people have been saying there may be issues with his dad being too involved on the football side of things of what Caleb's doing. Uh, talk about, you know, your experiences with Caleb's dad uh, back at Gonzaga uh, College High School. Yeah, I would not – I would not. you know, first of all, Carl and Dana are amazing parents. Uh, absolutely loved them. Loved seeing them uh, at the at the Notre Dame game this uh, this past year. Um, and uh, I would say that Carl loves his son a whole lot. And all he's trying to do is just like all good fathers are trying to do, put his son in the best position possible. Um, I don't, you know, he was never an issue in any way at Gonzaga. It's not like he was ever calling me, being like, "Hey, what what plays are you calling? You know, what are you doing? You know, none of that." He, he wasn't hit you with hitting you with the Sandra Bullocks from the sideline. <laughs> Run the dang ball! <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, he was always really supportive, and all he wants is for his son to be in his the the best position possible so that Caleb could shine. And I think we should all be looking at that and being like, how could I be more like like Carl, right? Like, how can I uh, work this hard um, and and sacrifice whatever I need to so that way my children are put in the best position to succeed. Um, you know, some people might think that he's doing too much. I'm sitting there going like, wow, like that's the kind of man that I want to be for my son and my daughter. When you when you hear we've heard, listen, some crazy stuff right about Caleb. Oh, he paints his fingernails. He cried to his mom in the stands. What's been the one thing that you heard, which I could care less about either of those? Like, can you throw 40 touchdowns and, and six interceptions? That's all I care about. But. When you, what's been the one thing that you've heard that you're just like, these guys are absolutely out of their minds for throwing this kind of slander Caleb's way? I, th I honestly think it's the emotions that, that he shows that it's absolutely wild to me that people are bashing him for caring so much. Like, how dare he really care about his team? How dare he care about his legacy? How dare he care about these very lofty goals of trying to be – you know, the Heisman was great, but that was not – he wanted he wanted to be a national champion. Why? Because he he's all about the team. You know, he could care less. I guarantee you he would trade his Heisman in a heartbeat to have a shot to play for the, for the Natty. So when you have those high aspirations and lofty goals and you have those high expectations that I'm Superman and I'm going to get the job done, it really hurts when you fall short. So, you know, to be able – I think it takes a lot of guts and courage to show and let out your emotions. Um, and that's a huge mental health thing on top of it, where we should not be bashing a young man for letting out his emotions. We should be saying that's the kind of guy that we should all be to be comfortable enough to let go and, and show those things from ourselves. I mean, vulner vulnerability is the ultimate strength. So that's to me was like the craziest thing was people bashing a young man for, you know, being vulnerable with his parent. And he didn't care if a million people were watching. You know, that's Caleb. He's true to himself. Um, and and those emotions just show his competitive nature and that fire that burns so deep within himself. Yeah, man, that's well said, Coach. It's good to put to rest, you know, rumors and all this speculation and get the real insight for somebody who's been involved, you know, in this guy's life since the beginning. And, you know, looking back from your time at Gonzaga and then obviously watching Caleb play throughout college, uh, what do you feel like the biggest area of improvement in terms of quarterback play 
or do you think he may need to make uh, before making his jump to the NFL? Everybody, every every quarterback coach, every offensive coordinator is always going to talk about being able to play within the constraints of the game, right? Hey, this is the play. This is the read. This is the throw. Um, and I think that's every quarterback's goal is to be better at that kind of stuff. Um, because the more you're able to operate within the system, uh, the easier it is to be great once the system breaks down and you got to go be Caleb, right? The things that we know he can do magically when a play breaks down, but the more he can continue improving upon playing within the system, um, then the, the more those other talents and everything are just going to keep shining and keep, you know, keep being highlighted. Do you feel like, right, when you, when you look at his Heisman season and then you look at this last season, what where do you feel like it kind of fell apart a little bit? Not to say it was a bad season, but definitely not a good enough season to go out there and win the Heisman. Where do you feel like it kind of fell apart where maybe you would have wanted to see Caleb change some things up? Um, I mean, it's a, the Heisman really at the end of the day is a team trophy. Yeah. You know, it does go to that that one guy, but that one guy is not doing his job if he doesn't have – all the pieces around them. I mean, how many quarterbacks have won the Heisman when their defense was lighting up a lot of points a, uh, a game? And I'm not, and I'm not trying to bash, you know, the the team or anything. We're, it's, just, it's just real talk that you know when a team's lighting up 40 points a game, that's hard to win um, uh, because if you're playing from behind and, and and all that stuff, that that is not an easy task. Um, so I, I, I watched the film and I think he still had a phenomenal season and uh, basically did about as well as you could ask a young man to do in the situation that he, uh, that, that he was put in um, and that he handled it all with uh, with a lot of grace, uh, humility. And I thought he played pretty darn well. So I don't know. I think people look at, oh, Heisman season, look at stats and things like that. Um, those are really easy things to focus on, but you're really – uh, need that you know that thirty thousand foot view to be like all right well these are two totally different teams right two different years uh, the teams they're playing against better worse offensive line better worse um, defense better you know all that kind of stuff plays into how successful was your individual season um, but it's a team game we all know that um, and I still think he had a, he had a he had a really strong year and I think all the NFL teams agree with that otherwise he wouldn't be you know in the position yeah. that he's in. Yeah, Coach, I want to ask you, you know, you, you being a coach that's coached quarterbacks in offense for a long time, uh, you know, if you could build your perfect quarterback, you know, and I'll break it down in terms of criteria, uh, let's talk about football IQ, let's talk about arm strength, let's talk about heart, toughness, and grit, and then let's, the last thing, let's talk about mobility. If you could build your perfect quarterback, you know, starting off with football IQ, you know, who whose football IQ would you take and, and put that on your perfect quarterback? Tom Brady, no doubt. So arm strength. <laughs> uh, arm strength, Caleb. But if I can't choose Caleb, uh, then I would say uh, yeah. uh, then I would say Patrick Mahomes. Listen, I love it. Like, I mean, listen, the, the IQ, the IQ wise, like when you're when you're sitting there talking about the, the smarts of a quarterback, you can't go wrong with Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, like that, that that's a great pick there. Arm strength, Pat Mahomes. I'll ask you this. When you watched his pro day, when you looked at the kind of player that Caleb uh, uh, or the kind of uh, showing that he put on. Were you watching it and kind of going, you know, you know, you can't do that. You know, you, you know, you got to make this player. Were you kind of watching it and going, all right, he he knows where he's at. Yeah. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's just going through the motions and playing the politics of the game right now. Yeah. And I would never say that Caleb's just going through the motions, but you know, he, he, he knows the deal. Like this is the t-shirt and short Olympics really. Right. Uh, it's a little bit of the dog and pony show that that you got you have to go through. Um, the film film don't lie, you know. So everybody was hyping up. I think the last throw was like a seventy yard throw. Um, you go look at his, you go look at his junior year huddle film, his highlight. It's still on the internet. Go check it out. Um, and like the third or fourth clip on there is in game in high school making a seventy yard throw. So it's that's that's a, that's a throw that he's been making for a long time. And I say his junior year because. We didn't get him for his senior year of high school uh, because he, you know, that's when he was able to go to OU uh, during the during the COVID uh, year. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's made that 70 yard throw plenty of times um, and he can do it in the game if uh, if need be. That's for sure. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you. So there, I know um, Caleb was teammates with Olu Fashano, yeah. the offensive tackle for Penn State. So it was I know he was a guy that, that was there at Gonzaga as well. Uh, talk about 
you know, Olu's development as a as a as a high school player, and then obviously being one of the the top elite linemen, you know, coming out in the draft, coming out of Penn State. You know, talk about how you see how you've seen him evolve as a player and how he's matured into a man, and, and having the opportunity to be another first round guy that you had the opportunity to impart to on a high school level. Yeah, I mean, that my dream is that the Bears pick Caleb and Olu. That would be uh, awesome to have two of my all-time favorite kids that I was lucky enough to, to coach be on my, my favorite hometown team. Um, Olu is a great person. Uh, he, he went to Gonzaga and wasn't even on the football team. Uh, we were walking the hallways and it was just like, hey, man, do you want to play football? And it, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, and he goes out there and, you know, by a sophomore year, you're just looking at this mountain of a young man going like, wow, like this guy can be really, really special, too. Um, we didn't, You know, you don't know how special a person uh, can truly be. But, you know, by Olu's senior year, uh, you had a really good sense that uh, this dude has a chance to also maybe maybe go into the league. Um, but it once again, with Caleb and with Olu, it both of them start, they ha- both have really great families, right? Just showing the impact that having a great mom and dad can have on a, on a young man. Um, and then that just transfers over to where, you know, Olu and Caleb, both great people uh, who, you know, understand that they have football as an avenue and a platform in order to create a better world around them. Um, and, and that's what I love most about both of those guys is um, they, they know where they are and how lucky they are to be there. And they just want to use what they have in order to, you know, be, once again, men for others and to and to spread the to spread the love um, and, and to spread, you know, their talents and goodness and make make the world around them, their families, friends, uh, just make it a better place. Um, and, and you got to love that about both of those guys. Um, so I'm, I'm super jacked for Olu. We were able to watch him, uh, uh, Penn State, play uh, Northwestern. We saw him after the game um, and just seeing his big, big smile and everything. Uh, it, it's 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 awesome. I'm, I'm very lucky that, um, that I was able to coach at Gonzaga during that time. Um, uh, it's a great high school academically. Um, you know, Randy Trivers does a great job. With, uh, with that program, trying to build great young men. Um, and you've heard me say man for others several times. That's the Jesuit the uh, philosophy, the school the school motto. And um, I know I was very lucky to be there, especially at that time. Uh, Olu and, uh, and Caleb would probably be where they are, whether or not they, they met me. I'm glad I was a part of their journey. Um, and I just hope that as a, a mentor, a coach and everything, that, uh, that I help them along the way further than uh, – than uh, the my replacement would have. No, nah, don't undersell it, coach. You got to listen. Go get Caleb. Go get Olu, and then make your bid for the Bears to come get you. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen. You got right. the orange on already. You might as well. J Mac. J Mac knows a guy. <laughs> hey, he's trying. So, so I'll tell you a story. So, coach is he's supposed to be with us right up the street. I, I tried my hardest to get coach to uh to come coach with us, and you know, coaches coach a lot of ball. Impressive resume, obviously. Knows a lot of great football, but, you know, as you can tell, he's a great leader of men. And, you know, that's something that we wanted in our program. So I fought, you know, tooth and nail to get coach up with us. But he is where he's supposed to be. He's done a lot of great things for the program that he's with. Uh, You know, obviously continued success to you and the Wildcats uh, right down the street. I want to ask you this, Coach, on draft night, obviously it's going to be a big night for Caleb and Olu, but a big night for you and your family as well. Uh, what do you have in terms of draft night plans? What do you have planned for that night? We're just going to be a big family, you know, cheering on two of uh, two great young men, uh, uh, kind of fulfilling uh, a dream that both of them have had for for a while. So, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, family is the most important thing, um, and it's really a celebration of those two. Uh, but I know my parents, Mike Schechter and Andy Schechter, uh, they they are very proud of the work that that I've done. And, um, and I know that they're, you know, they've always been my number one supporters. Uh, and then I, you know, my beautiful wife, Nicole, uh, my daughter, Haley, my son, Zayd, and my dog Maverick, we'll, we'll all be together enjoying the draft, uh, because family's the most important thing. Um, and, uh, and that's who I definitely want to be with while I watch with a lot of happiness, joy, and pride seeing, uh, Caleb and Olu get drafted. And uh, yeah, you guys are pretty good up there, Coach. No doubt, you're doing a great job uh, over at Carmel. No, thanks, Coach. We appreciate it, man. Um, you know, before we let you go, I don't know if Pat has another question. I want to make sure that 
I want to make sure that Bears fans know where they can follow you. I follow you on Twitter. Uh, Coach does a great job of putting out great content for coaches and for players to uh, follow and look at. Does a good job of putting out sharing videos of of football drills geared towards all positions. So, uh, Coach, tell the Bears fans where they can find you on your social media platforms. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, Coach D Shack. Uh, Shack is spelled uh, uh, like the little house, S H A C K. Uh, not like the basketball player who we sometimes get confused. I can see that. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah. It's the and beard it's, and the, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you saw me stand up height wise, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then same thing on, on Instagram. Um, and then if you want to follow my, uh, uh, the strength stuff for uh, Libertyville high school, uh, Libertyville strength for all. Um, so I know I'm, I'm super lucky to be at Libertyville. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my social media stuff for, uh, for me. Coach, we appreciate appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to give us some insight into who Caleb Williams and Olu even is, right, as, as people and as, as players coming possibly to the Chicago Bears. We know Caleb probably will be, but Olu, and listen, I'm not mad at the first round of Olu and Caleb. Yeah. You can convince me on worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? You convince me That's on right. worse. But appreciate you for taking the time out. We appreciate you guys for watching as well. For Jason McKee, I am Pat the Designer. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down and uh, let us know how you guys feel about getting the insight on Caleb in the comments below. Thanks.